who am I? I am a Canuck. I identify with Nelson, BC, a small town nestled in the mountains where I was born and spent my childhood. Nelson is a place known for fantastic skiing, an artistic community, hippies, and grow operations. I also identify with the time of a classic playoff series between the Vancouver Canucks and the New York Islanders, a series in which a charismatic team of players, such as Tiger Williams, Stan Smeal, and King Richard Brodeur, almost did the unthinkable at the time and bring the Stanley Cup to Vancouver. Canucks are wild. We're connected to nature and the elements. We think big, and we have a frontier mentality. So, who are you? You may identify with Le Canadien or whatever other cultural influences that have shaped you. When I was growing up as a Canuck, when I thought of Quebec, I thought of Guy Lafleur. That was Quebec to me. Identity is important. It's within us. It's what motivates us. Part of what defines us is the culture from which we come. Things such as historical events and customary practices. What also defines us is our surroundings, the social and physical fabric in which we live. We're currently living in a global society that is increasingly urbanized. Bottom line, we live in cities. In fact, the numbers are staggering. Currently, approximately 4 billion people live in cities. And that number is expected to grow to 5 billion by the year 2030. And that's not far away. And this reality poses some serious concerns with respect to sustainability. You see, cities are like nodes of resource consumption in the Earth's system. Energy consumption, food consumption, water use, all are concentrated in urban environments. And all are dependent on the natural environment. They're putting pressure on the natural environment. Current Earth system research shows that in some areas, we are reaching the carrying capacity of the Earth. These are called planetary boundaries, or the limits to which we can deplete essential life support systems, such as biospheric integrity or biochemical flows, without there being severe consequences. So the key question that we need to consider is, how are we going to design a sustainable future? I argue that in order to achieve a sustainable future, we need to redesign everything. This means rethinking commonly held assumptions about things such as transportation, food provision and consumption, energy creation and use, communication and building, just to name a few. But is there something special about this design process that makes it different than coming up with a new watch, a new app, or a new type of construction material? Yes, I believe there is. Ecological and environmental thinking must drive this design process. In United Nations policy, this is referred to as mainstreaming biodiversity and ecosystems. In this sense, mainstreaming means bringing ecology into decision-making in a meaningful way. It means considering these factors in industries, such as tourism, fisheries, manufacturing, and agriculture. But when we speak of design, it's a little more profound. We must have ecology drive the design process and help us see systems rather than linear problems. 
So what does this look like? Well, some obvious examples are things such as green roofs, recycling programs, building integrated renewable energy, all of which are great and necessary. However, ecology must inform a systems view of our urban environments. And this means not only built infrastructure and physical technology, but the actual processes that drive how our cities operate. This is an ecological systems view of our urban future. This is a bold ecological design of our urban future. There are many facets to this, but I want to focus on one. How we run our organizations. Mainstreaming biodiversity and ecosystems into organizational operation is a design process. We have to look at how our organizations use and rely on the ecosystem services that nature provides us. For example, provisioning services, fresh water, source materials, food, regulating services, climate regulation, providing a stable climate, flood regulation, this is something I think we're quite familiar with these days. Supporting services. Primary production and nutrient cycling. This is the base foundation of our natural ecosystems. And cultural services. Aesthetic quality of nature. Spiritual meaning. And recreational opportunities. Skiing being one of many. These ecosystem services must sustain the organizations in which we work, the urban environments in which we live, and future generations to follow us. We can't mess them up, and we kind of currently are. What I'm putting forth to you today is not a discrete solution. Rather, what I'm offering you is a new way of looking at your life, the governments you elect, the businesses that you deal with, and the urban environments in which you live. We need to usher in an eco-industrial revolution in the urban context. We need to bring environment-focused design thinking to our cities, and it must be driven through ecosystems thinking. Now, this is a huge challenge. It will require us to change our perspective, to invent new technology, to rethink our urban settings, and to redesign our economic systems to attach economic value to the ecosystem services in our cities. I'm speaking of enormous change. And what will determine our success or failure is how we respond to this challenge. And I argue that this enormous change needs to become part of our identity. It needs to become part of our identity as Canucks, as Quebecois, and as Canadians. In essence, we are in game seven of the Stanley Cup final, and it's double overtime. Right? We either rise to the challenge, score the winning goal, and win the cup, or we falter and we fail. I can speak for myself as a Canuck. We don't give up and we see opportunity in adversity. And I hope you do too, because our future depends on it. Thank you. <laughs>